everyone. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of the Uru Labs podcast from Bengaluru. Ever complain how bad our cities are, how bad your commute is? You will get to hear from people who are working to solve these problems in their own way. This is your weekly soapbox for urban sustainability. I am your host Satya Shankaran. From software to civil society to managing the Chennai Smart City as its CEO, our guest today Raj Cherubal has seen it all. He holds an MS in physics from the University of Louisville and an MS in nuclear engineering from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. As an outsider in the government trying to bring fresh perspectives, I thought we should have him on the show to tell us the inside story of how the government within courts works for the citizen. Its structure, the complexity and all the inertia, all of this imposes on them. This is what we'll talk about today. Welcome to the show, Raj. Thank you so much for having me here. So let's just dig in with the big question that I wanted to start with. Why sure. is the government slow? Uh, I wish I had a simple answer because I've come to the conclusion being a middle-aged man, having done this for 20 years, they have just some fundamental problems with Indian, uh, the way governance is set up, which is maybe uh, very different in many of the advanced cities, uh, our city, our country. I think uh, there are two, three fundamental problems from what I can see. India, in my opinion, is probably the most centralized country on earth. Uh, I'm not talking about the last 75 years. I'm talking from probably from the British period. Think about it this way. Uh, there's Queen Victoria sitting somewhere there. Uh, she talks to her parliament. They talk to the Viceroy in Delhi and Delhi talks to a collector. The process was simple. Collect taxes, run the country so that it serves their purpose, right? And by the way, uh, um, some people may not like that way I'm saying it, but the intention is correct. Ask yourself, no matter which party governed, and I'm not questioning anybody's uh, personal motivation. Every uh, Let me step back a bit and say, most politicians, most bureaucrats, most citizens are patriotic. They want to do good for this uh, country. Most politicians I know want to do good things. Nobody you know, gets into politics thinking I'll do bad things, right? They all want to be the next leak one. They all want to be the next reformer that go back into the books of history. Bureaucrats want to do the same thing because they obviously some, once upon a time got into these professions because they want to do something good. So I don't buy the argument that uh, typically any topic in India starts with makkal serilla. People are not, not good. Uh, if I say, look, Tamil Nadu, then if it's happening in, let's say, Assam, oh, Assam people are very good. Uh, people here are not good. If I say it's happening in Madre, they'll say, yeah, Madre people are very good. Chennai people are not good. Okay, I've seen this in pretty much any part of India you go to. And there are structural reasons why we make, when the systems are not functioning, we blame ourselves. We blame the people uh, and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of counter questions I'll ask you. But, but I mean, coming back to my original point, we're a highly centralized country. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we have never had the chance to sit back and think, OK, who should do what? Mm -hmm. So think first base, basic principles. Uh, ask yourself, uh, in my opinion, 99 percent of my problem is local problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Mosquito park, uh, park, good problem, bad problem, park, road, uh, trees, uh, dog, uh, uh, you know, neighbor constructing six o'clock in the morning. This is a local problem. It has nothing to do with foreign policy, nothing to do with defense policy. Uh, I am not worried about which state is going to war with which state or any other stuff. Like my, my problems are very local. But my local government has no power whatsoever. If I'm in a village, I'm in a town, I'm in a city, we instinctively know not to worry about what councillors and so on. Not, not because they're bad people. It's just that you know that they can't do much. They have to go back to state government. They have to go back to the bureaucrats. They have to and so on and so forth. That's a, that's imagine thing from a very ordinary citizen who doesn't understand uh, you know federalism and structure of uh, Tamil Nadu government or Karnataka government and so on and so forth. Just simple problem. What what are your ten problems today morning uh, and who was responsible? With it? In fact, Janagra does a very good exercise of a matrix. They ask you, okay, think of all the services and problems you have. Think of all the departments who are supposed to do it. Then ask the question, is it a local government? Is it a state government? Is it a central government? This is a very good exercise for people who are interested in subject. That's when you realize we at the local level, you, me, bureaucrat, uh, I'm a citizen, my neighbor, etc., etc. We have pretty much no power to do anything. I'm talking about constitutionally. Mm -hmm. I can always yeah. go yeah. Uh, cajole somebody into doing something. That's not the point I'm trying to say. So tomorrow, if the city wants to do something, or the village wants to do something, 
you have no power and you have no ability to raise taxes you have no ability to raise some money etc etc you can pretty much do mm-hmm. anything i'm exaggerating to a point but so if you look at any cities uh, the various uh, infrastructure public infrastructure public services if you do the mapping you'll suddenly start realizing the train is central government the many other roads big big roads in the city are uh, state government because of the highway big big lakes which are good lake bad lake dying lake whatever is pwd state government uh abhi planning state government uh, bus state government except for certain roads and garbage at least in chennai the local government has i mean very little power and jobs to do if we were all computers we could all coordinate very easily no big deal yeah you talk to highway talks to government uh, corporation corporation talk to pwd but human societies don't function like that i mean we can't mm-hmm. there's protocol mm-hmm. there's hierarchy there's command and control systems and so on and so forth this is why we are not able to move a stone from here to here in a normal sense of what a singapore or a zurich or whatever fancy cities do problem is we are highly centralized so then the question you need to ask is okay what should new delhi be doing okay with every all of us will agree that there are some things new delhi is supposed to do what should the state government do what should the local government do if we don't have that debate and this is the kind of debate singapore had hong kong had uh, there is democratic and democratic new york city had etc etc they were all built from the ground up so here's an example i give in, in san francisco right everybody loves san francisco etc i'm pretty sure there was a time in san francisco where they didn't probably know who the president of united states was but if the snow is not collected garbage is not collected the mayor loses his job or her job or and so on and so forth that's how the city developed because then the local people have to start building capacity whether it's a decentralized into wards or whatever the mechanism may be right china has a certain decentralized model new york or sorry us has a certain model and so on so that's how the cities grew that's how the villages grew so which means today what we're doing is when after 200 years of centralization now you and i are sitting in some bangalore or chennai or new delhi and saying how do we build capacity of tindal valley how do we build the capacity of some uh, you know some remote area as if you and i are in charge of now that city and their life and everything else right that capacity should have come from the ground up basic stuff i'm not a, there's always innovation that will come from outside or somewhere else you may cut and paste copy and all how to do a road how to do a footpath how to plant a tree these are not something that you and i supposed to sit and uh, as technocrats i'm saying or a bureaucrat or whatever you want to call ourselves and teach some remote uh, city remote village how to do whether you're a bureaucrat whether you're a technocrat sitting in a state capital or a uh, country's capital so that's what is happening now highly centralized country where nobody has any power to do anything and the people who have the power to do anything can't do anything see you can't sit in new delhi and fix hundreds of cities hundreds of villages no matter what yojana you create no matter how, which party is in power no matter how patriotic you may be no matter how determined you are it is mathematically impossible you can't fix lakhs of uh, villages sitting in new delhi same thing happens in every state every state of india is bigger than many countries on earth right uh, you just can't uh, run a state even the littlest state of india cannot be run from a capital where every file has to go to the capital etc etc so that is number one problem in my opinion and because we are not able to confront that problem and we did confront let me clarify that till uh, 1991 okay even mm. though we talk mm. about 1991 from an economic liberalization point of view i suspect it had a uh, ripple effects so till when i was a kid uh, i literally am not exaggerating when the state chief minister may say that we are not able to build this particular bridge because somebody prime minister in new new delhi is not allowing us and they weren't exaggerating because funds permissions everything came from new delhi you literally may have to go to delhi to you know cajole somebody into getting something to build a bridge or something whether i'm exaggerating or not is not important the point is it was that bad okay mm-hmm. and then new delhi in, in there are policies decided by new delhi that says look coal from bihar should uh, be the same price in mumbai so ask yourself why should anybody build a factory in bihar when i can as a businessman sit in mumbai enjoy my mumbai life and go get coal at the same price right so it was a highly centralized way of uh, whether it's a bus system or a coal system so imagine the destruction that has caused uh, because of the highly centralized way in 1991 because economy was liberalized look at how states are now competing with each other chief ministers and cabinets have become far more empowered 
than what we were in the 50s and 60s, right? So states are now competing. Everybody wants to show that they are better governed. They're trying to attract investment, et cetera, et cetera. That little bit of decentralization has happened in the state level, quite a bit of uh, decentralization. But still, it is only scratching the surface, okay? Mm. We still have God knows how many yojanas are from the New Delhi, uh, water-related, pipe-related, bus-related, even smart city. I mean, I, I'm a beneficiary of being in the smart city and all that. And I'll tell you why it may or may not be a good idea. But point is, again, a central government or union government is trying to tell the cities how to improve itself, even if it's flexible. The smart city has a lot of flexibility in it and all that. It's like uh, giving you a uh, thousand crore and saying, now become a brain surgeon. You may be very good at your job, but that doesn't mean overnight, just because I gave you money, you become a brain surgeon. So we are trying to circumvent the fundamental problem by coming up with schemes, whether at the federal level or union level or at the state level, which is not going to work beyond a point. Because again, it's like uh, we are 75-year-old children uh, because we were never allowed to walk. We were never allowed to get up and build our muscles, etc., etc. But we are assuming that you are uh, adults, but we are not. We are little children, 75-year-old, 200-year-old children. Uh, and the problem of that is getting circumvented by various other means. So that is one part. The other part, I'll very quickly, I'll say that uh, this is my, uh, maybe because I'm technocrat, I'm biased. What I have found recently is that we have a vibrant political system and I'm very grateful and very proud of it. I don't want to be anywhere else, any other country. I, we are very vibrant. We can complain about politicians, etc. So be it. But they are much closer to the ground. They understand people's problems. We also have a pretty decent uh, bureaucratic structure. You know, uh, there are files, procedures, precedents, all the things that we, you and I as ordinary citizens take for granted. Uh, why is the government so slow? Hey, there are the high court orders, there are precedents, the international laws, there are rules and regulations for how to tender something, etc. Right? The slowness comes from the capacity and the decentralization part. But the point is, there are procedures you can always improve upon. What has got lost in the centralization is the technocracy. Mm. So today, a city or a village doesn't even know how to lay a road in a straight line. Things which you go to a complete third world country, you would assume after civil war, they'll all be in pathetic country. I, mean, I won't name names of the country, but I've been to n number of countries. I always land there thinking that, wow, they must be very pathetic place. And I'm shocked and stunned and humbled and humiliated. I mean, <laughs> humbled by saying, oh my God, these guys are, at least in these things, they have been able to build a straight footpath or a, a stormwater drain that doesn't go the opposite direction and so on. So imagine how much technocratic vacuum there exists where every day, every week, every year, we are reinventing the wheel, right? Cycle mm -hmm. track, tree planting, what tree? This is, is this a local tree or a foreign tree? Yeah, should the hole be above the stormwater drain or below the stormwater drain? I'm talking about minuscule problem. I'm talking, imagine uh, running a city is far more master planning. Master planning is not something you just walk in and say, okay, master plan one lot. Hey, you know, you need years of experience to figure out what is a master plan, right? From that master plan, supposed to come the GIS system. And then GIS system is not a simple system. You need IT, uh, CTO, CIO, uh, programmer, blah, blah. Where, is, where are all those people in Bangalore or Chennai or Guwahati or wherever, right? All advanced cities grew from the ground up because they were forced to, not because they were all clever people or amazing people, because public forces these politicians and bureaucrats to do something, they have no choice but to hire the right people. They fail, they iterate, iterate, iterate. You get a Singapore, you get a Hong Kong, you get a Paris after 300 years, you get a London or a New York after 200, 300 years. These people were pathetic uh, 200, 300 years ago. They're probably far worse than any of our Indian city. They are where they are because they built capacity from the ground up. No amount of central planning could have created a Paris or a London or a whatever else. That's That's the gist of my, uh, you know, uh, whatever I have discovered. So this uh, centralization question is interesting, Raj, because is there something like a decentralization maturity curve? Is it when you said Paris and others evolved over time to decentralize by nature of us inheriting centralization and now having to decentralize in order to solve problems. Is there an inertia, which I assume is there because people don't want to give up the power and do that. And second, what could be the inertia coming out of, because you have experience on the ground looking at these people. Is there a time for leadership to be built at the city level or is it the other way around? You should say that let them suffer, start building the capacity, find those people and figure it out quickly. 
because I seem to find this dichotomy. When we got independent, there were only a few people up there who could, you know, a few elites who could govern and they said, I can't decentralize to the states because I don't know what capacity is there in the state, who can, you know, what kind of thing is there. Is the same fear there in decentralizing is that they may not run fast as fast as I would want to for my national interest goals. So let me try to tweak the levers sitting here and entice them to do what I want. That's one kind of a thing. If you flip it and say you shouldn't worry about this capacity, it will come. Why don't you do it already? Because 74th Amendment is there in whatever flawed way it is there. But it took 25 years for us to even talk about city government and Bengaluru, for instance, you're lucky in Chennai. Bengaluru, for instance, doesn't even have a city government for the last four years, right? The bureaucracy runs, but the bureaucracy can run because they appoint an administrator and say, keep doing what you're doing. It's a civil function. It's an executive function. Keep doing. But there's no political will. There's no, if there is no Bengaluru Act that can be amended by the mayor of Bengaluru, it has to be done by the state government to amend the city act. Where do you see this change if it happens? And let's say tomorrow somebody decided we'll have to do something and city has to have its own act that can be done by the mayor and the mayor is going to be permanent. He cannot be extinguished by willy-nilly by the state government. If they decide to do that, where, where should it start? I mean, will they even decide to do that? Or should you say, don't be afraid, you have to do this? And is that a call that we should make? So the simple answer uh, would be that I don't see any other... Uh, we can always continue like this for the next thousand years and be fine wallow around, wallow along like this. Uh, but if you really, all of us agree that hey, we want to be in great places on earth uh, in terms of public infrastructure and so on. I'm not talking about culture, language and all that. There's no other choice. I see Singapore is a city. So people, you can't, you, it's a city state, right? It is not the same as India or even a, any other city for Cambodia, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and so on. They cannot be, they, you can't show me a model uh, of a centralized way of running a country that became better. Now, somebody will say China. Again, I'm no historian, but I've read enough about Chinese uh, history in the last modern history. When they tried to do uh, centralization, etc., you ended up with 40, 50 million people dead, right? Today, uh, my cursory understanding of China and having visited there is that they are more decentralized than India is. It's a, it's a very ironic or a paradox or whatever you want to call it. Their mayors get promoted based on performance. You see, you become head of China or second in China, etc. by going from the bottom up. There may be exceptions. I'm pretty sure there are exceptions. But they all go from the ground up. Shanghai mayor who was famous becomes the next. He's, he or she is brought to Beijing to be in a fancy cabinet and so on. So you go there, the growth is from the ground up. Not from the uh, dictates as much as it sound, looks like a centralized country, cities have tremendous power and tremendous power to do bad also. So they've done a lot of idiotic things out there. Uh, so I'm, I, I'm not suggesting uh, magic and uh, milk and honey will flow when you decentralize. But the counter to that is to say no country on earth I know of in history has become great. This country is made up of cities, towns and villages. There's nothing else in a country. I mean, geographically speaking, so unless you have millions of people governing themselves, you know, uh, there's no way somebody sitting in Delhi or somewhere can do it. Now, coming back to uh, will they do it or not? Every society, nobody wants to give up power. Okay, so it, we can't say people in France are so generous that, you know, the cell government guys want to give away power to the mayor of Paris or mayor of Lyon or something. No, everywhere in the world, people are people. They're not going to give up power. So before 1991, all of us would laugh at the person who says one day states will be more powerful, chief ministers will be competing with each other, right? So for whatever reason, it happened. Now the problem is the ball is in both union government and the state government's court. There are a lot of things the union government can do by saying, look, we are not going to get involved in all this because it's a state problem. All the cities, panchayats, basically all come under the state government's purview. Uh, no matter what we, Yojana comes from Delhi. Money may come from Delhi. Guidelines may come from Delhi. But ultimately, it's the state government that's deciding what should happen and not happen. So the ball is in the state government court to say, you know what, this current model is not working, right? Uh, we always focus on the one capital city, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai. What about the other thousands of cities and towns? I mean, who are going to, who's going to uh, sit and manage them? I'm assuming, maybe I'm right. Someday, a uh, state, a uh, newly elected government may start saying that, look, immediately giving a bunch of money to the villages and uh, cities may go down the drain uh, because they don't have capacity. Can we, over the next five years, 
uh, like the Finance Commission does, like the State Finance Commission and all does, say that, look, every year we're going to increase the allocation to the city, to the village, to the panchayat. Well, money is key. No point simply giving power without money or giving advice without money. Mm. Money has to be, right? So the first step is to say, look, a uh, lot of these things uh, shall be transferred to the city. A lot of the assets of the state government, uh, central government may or may not uh, go along. So, for, for example, why, why should there be a highway in the middle of a uh, highway department in the middle of a city? They, their way of thinking is different. Their way of thinking is taking cars and uh, lorries fast from one point to another. Inside the city, highway has no business, right? Uh, or highway should completely give up its character and say, okay, from now I'm going to be an urban transport. They won't do it because they, they, that's not the nature of the organization. Why should uh, big, big lakes be uh, managed by PWD? Why shouldn't the city manage it? Because they are the closest thing. If a, if a bunch of people keep complaining that sewage is going into that particular uh, water body, if the ward councillor and the public and the MLA there, etc., starts agitating, and then something can be done. See, I can go on and on and on, right? Uh, and then, for example, in Chennai, I don't know what Bangalore, the water people come under the state, which means, yes, theoretically they can coordinate, but practically it doesn't happen. The road digging that pisses off every Indian uh, citizen is about that. It's about who will build the cat, who will put the common systems, which is neither uh, corporation nor water, uh, sorry, water guys, nor the uh, electricity guy. There has to be somebody at the city level to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to put the duct. I'm going to put certain things which are neither road nor water nor electricity duct. These things have to be common infrastructure. The city has to say, okay, I'll take charge of it. You water guy, you put your pipe. Don't worry about, uh, you know, how the road was built, etc. Then there'll be electronic systems in place that says, okay, you're going to dig the road. Uh, here's a process by which you're going to dig the road, I'm going to fix the road, and there's a process to it. And by the way, the example I just gave you, this is exactly what happened in Toronto. They had the same mess, okay, so it's not like other countries don't have a mess. But because city has control over it, they realized the left hand of the city, right hand of the city, nobody's coordinating. So they were able to put systems in place, processes in place, more than just some electronics and app and all that. There's a process in place by which, say, you're going to dig the road, that guy's going to dig the road, I'm going to fix the road tomorrow anyway. So you don't fix the road, you dig, you do your job, and so on. So you can you take this example and multiply it a million times is what the problem of the city is, right? So I would say that state government can start saying, every year I'm going to increase the allocation to the local body. Every year I'm going to systematically get all the state government agencies out with up to a point, I mean, maybe the electricity department shouldn't be under the city government. Okay, that's a debatable question. South Africa, I think the electricity is under the city government. I don't know. Okay, the point is, let there be a debate. Who should be in the city? Who should not be in the city? There'll always be a role for the state that says, look, a big river is going from north to south. No city can handle it. No panchayat can handle it. Obviously, you need the PWD to handle it. You have a highway going from here to Madurai. You can't have mm. Madurai or Chennai handling that highway. You need a highway department. So it's understood that state has a role to play. And there are so many other things the state has to do. Running cities, running town and all cannot be done at a state level. So I think I'm hoping that one other state or more states suddenly start realizing if we want to compete with Sweden and Singapore and whatnot, not simply compare each other to other states of India and keep feeling good or bad about it. If you're going to be somebody uh, in world level in the next few years, this is ha this has to be done. Hence, let's start a roadmap towards it. And then I'm not even fixated upon the idea of mayor. Okay, they may, we may have a minister for uh, Chennai kind of model. I don't know. Okay, so we don't have to, see, mayor came because it came from the ground. up. So the powerful people became mayors, powerful people then stood for MP election or something. Here it goes the other way. Right? The most prestigious post is uh, Lok Sabha or becoming an MLA. So we, unfortunately, we do have an upside down system. So I'm not going to be very obsessed with the idea that every city should have a mayor or something. Let there be a localized way of governing, however imperfect and messy like any human system is, but the, the model has to change, you know. So that, that that's that's something, I don't know who will build the cat now, but hopefully listening to all of us, some state government will say, yes, you know, I need, I need to start doing things. One uh, article I had written almost 10, 15 years ago, where I always imagine that mm. India may mm. become like a confederation of city-states. So ultimately, when the population of the cities grow and your neighboring district, etc., is just an extension of your city, what India will be is a bunch of cities. Cities with a bunch of uh, towns and villages around it. I mean, right, right now, Chennai, that's what it is, right? 
Chennai has a towns around it and a villages around it. What if we were to start structuring not in terms of districts because I don't see a purpose in district. The district was a British concept from what I, if I understand it right. District has no meaning, you know. District collector, district collector will do this. Why, why, what will district collector do for Chennai or a Madurai or a Kandutu? What will district collector do about all the, uh, because a lot of this thing again is line agency from the state government that is uh, doing the work, right? It's not like collector is doing something. So the collector, if, if he or she is like a governor of a district, then you have to ask yourself, is the district like a state with all the powers and, you know, to do good and do great stuff? Otherwise, it has no meaning. You know, uh, today, uh, the district, in my opinion, from what I see, is no meaning in a modern India. So we need to move towards a population center, which is a city, town, village. These are the only three population centers there is. And it's it's a governance is for people, you know, not for paddy field and uh, forest area. That, that That is part of human existence. So I think we need to start radically thinking or rethinking a model by which these population centers are able to govern itself in coordination with the state government, in coordination with the union government, and build the city from the ground, I mean, uh, country from the ground up. No, I, I get what so, you're saying. There is the bureaucratic function which is more predominantly consumed by us, and we don't consume the political function as much, other than what they mean and hope that they are doing the job. In the end, they want to also do the bureaucratic functions because they realize that's where the action is. And they are not necessarily doing anything structurally to alter. Because if you go back to the people and ask who's fixing your drain, they'll name your local corporator if there is one or your local MLA. They are not going to tell who's the AE or AWE or the, uh, you know, the guy who's the administrative side. Because the accountability is with the politician and they start stepping in. Now there is this, again, it comes back to this maturity model of earlier I've heard some of my other guests say on the show that uh, in the olden days the mayoral function was so important that leaders grew out of there and then got promoted to the national level just like the example you said but now you don't even see the mayor existing yeah the same examples were given to me by by other guests so I, I i can understand historically there has been leadership at a decentralized level growing in but yet today if you look at the example of how the smart cities came in and did certain things my experience with that was because there was money on the table, some of the cities said, why not take it and use that money to do something? Now, obviously, that came with the diktats from there to say, OK, let's put X amount of cycle tracks. Maybe the maturity of cycle tracks were not there in some towns and cities to be having that. But yet they did it anyway. And <clears throat> some of them have gone on with the momentum. Some others haven't. Some of them have done it as a checkbox item. And it is there because I have to report back for the money that is being consumed and get the product done. So there is some advantages of the center trying to say certain things and putting money on the table and say, do it because I tell you. That in their view ostensibly is I am taking everybody along and hopefully everybody will come at the same speed of development and we can claim that as a nation we are achieving something. That's one goal. The other thing is to say, yeah, some states are going to be slower and they may not do certain things. Should we make peace with that? Similarly with the cities. District, in in my personal opinion, I'm not an expert in this, but it's just a decentralized way of collecting taxes. That's why they still kept the word collector. Uh, other than that, I think the life is in the cities and the panchayats and the town municipal corporations. And if they do well, it should be well. Coming back to this idea of making the government faster, right? It is slow because complexity, structural We'll come back and see how this structural thing can help. But before we answer going fast, let's just look at this. Is the experiment of giving money from the center or the states giving money to the city making people dependent? Or are they going through the motions of doing it, but yet they are where they are with the cultural milieu they are in? Is it going to help at all this kind of decentralized funding? Okay, let me put on the technocratic hat now, right? Uh, so my after I complain mm. about 300 years of centralization, I also say that we cannot sit another 300 years and say, let uh, nature take its course, right? Obviously, that is not an answer. You can't go tell a politician saying, tell the public, you know, wait for 300 years, right? So the question becomes, are there ways to innovate and uh, speed up this process while decentralization happening? Again, by, by, um, I want to reiterate, there is no substitute for long-term decentralization. Having said that, one point I think we always miss is that where did the money went, whether Smart City or uh, Jain and URM, so it's not a political thing. Any government, for example, the money came from cities, villages and towns, right? 
So the money is going to uh, the, in a centralized location and a piece of that is coming back. So we need to start asking those questions. I mean, does it make any sense that instead of public on the ground deciding, fighting it out? I mean, I'm not suggesting it's a, like a nice uh, lovey-dovey situation in a city or a village. We'll all have our own uh, you know, religion, caste, this, that, language issues and so on. But that's how democracy's function. Then deciding, okay, my road needs to be fixed before your road, etc., etc. Or do you want somebody sitting thousands of miles away telling that we need uh, pipes, we need a park, we need a cycle track? So that's a fundamental question we need to ask. Okay, But now if you were to ask me as a technocrat, what can be done? So one of the things I've been harping about for quite some time, the last few years after having been in Smart City, and by the way, Smart City, to the credit of the people who came up with the idea and run it, they had a lot of flexibility. And they also, the framework of smart city, people used to be very skeptical or very cynical. They thought it's all going to be electronics. It's all going to be for the big companies to sell some computer and satellite or something. If you look at the guidelines of smart city, it was all green. I mean, it was as if some NGO had written it, right? Environmental NGO or somebody had written it. It was all about air quality, walkability, water quality, etc. So I wouldn't find too much fault in the uh, guidelines of uh, this thing, smart city. And the smart city also had asked that you give us a proposal, we'll give you the money for it, right? Now, how much time did the city have to put up a proposal? So imagine if I ask you to give you a pro give me a proposal for a brain surgery right now. I'll give you two, three days, one month, right? Can you do it? You cannot, right? So uh, asking a city for a proposal, even if you get a great consultant, he's going to cut and paste a bunch of ideas from here and there and then once the money comes, then political pressure comes in because that, that proposal would have created a hurry. Secretary, we have to give some proposal. This is how all schemes work, right? Suddenly the money comes or the, the, the yeah. dangle and then you also give a proposal. Okay, let's assume that's a, okay, fine, no problem. Something, you have to have some proposal to give an idea. What I would, what I've been recommending to anybody who will listen to me is to say, for example, you want to start a McDonald's tomorrow in Bangalore. Do you start asking the philosophical question of what is a burger, what is a uh, um, uh, no, restaurant. Like, no, you have some money, there's a cookie cutter available. If you have X rupees, you get a McDonald's like this. If you have Y rupees, you get a bigger McDonald's, right? Because it's been standardized. So it means whether you like it or McDonald's or not, there's a McDonald's there, Reliance store there, etc. It's been standardized. You can blame me for sounding undemocratic, but I'm putting a technocratic hat. Ask yourself, how many things do a city need? 10 things, 20 things, 100 things, maybe, right? You need a bus system. You need uh, good roads. Good roads means ducting, etc., etc. There's a package to it. Then you need, uh, advance, you'll start thinking parking management system, cycle track. You need shade from a global point of view, warming point of view, you need trees and various other strategy. No matter how much you slice and dice, there are only n things a city needs. You can always add more. I'm saying I'm fundamental things. You, you need a master plan. It's average master plan you need to start with. From the master plan, you need a water plan, dog plan, cat plan, etc., etc., etc. Right? With that, only a corporate, I mean, the technocrat and the bureaucrat can do something. No. If you have a mm -hmm. half baked plan, you can do something about it. The road goes from here to there, or the footpath is from here to there. Footpath is of uh, five inches. Otherwise, what will happen when I get the money? I'm thinking, okay, what is the road? <clears throat> Should the road be 10 meter wide or 100 meter wide? Should there be a footpath? No need footpath because, hey, after all, people in Chennai don't walk, right? Why do you need a cycle track? There's nobody cycling. So the debate happens after we get the money. So why not, if you're going to give the money and be so centralized anyway, why not give them all the packages so that they can cookie cut and put the stuff in? So, uh, for example, you want the city to have uh, X buses for every lakh uh, passenger, right? You can debate whether it's X plus one or X minus one, but let's assume X. Should the city start from scratch and ask what is a bus? And that's what happens now. But mm. should it be a friendly bus? Should it be a lower floor bus? A top floor bus? Is it articulate bus? A mini bus? Uh, o and M cost? Or should it be? Are by then, by the time this debate happens, everybody's transferred, right? The, Engineer is transferred, the secretary is transferred, the new person comes and says, oh, KFW or World Bank is going to give us money to buy a bunch of buses. We start all over again. So can't we now package and say, look, you want, you don't have to take the money, right? Many cities, by the way, don't take money on various schemes. A smart city, many cities, big cities, they said, hey, we don't need your thousand crore, we have enough money, right? Mumbai did, for example. But if you're going to give the money and if you want to build the capacity, you can only build capacity by doing something on the ground, right? Not by letting loose people who don't know what to do, 
the run around for two, three years and then put pressure on them saying, how come you have not done it? How come you have not done it? So why not package, come up with a consensus saying that, look, you need 100 buses there. You need, let's switch to electric bus. Let's not go diesel. Let's not have that debate again. But electric bus is not easy to buy because it's got procurement rules, logistics rules, et cetera, et cetera. So do all these things. Give them RFP, give them terms of reference, give them a bunch of consultants, give them a, you know, uh, all those things. And if they still cannot do, okay, fine, no problem. They don't deserve the buses. But most cities probably will be able to take that after some fighting and tinkering here and there, will be able to implement it. The reason I'm coming to this is, I, again, I'll talk only about Chennai example. So every project that, not every project, many other projects, important projects we did in Chennai, I like to think of it as strategic pieces. That one project didn't save Chennai and make it into some great city or anything like that. But that, doing that first project is near impossible in an Indian condition, right? So take a simple issue of water body restoration. Because we had done homework, many NGOs, not just us, many NGOs and others had done homework that debate of Sar Panamudiya can't be done. There is no water body in Chennai. Even if you fix the water body in Chennai, it's all going to disappear anyway. Why waste taxpayers' money? Blah, 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 blah. Five years we'll debate this, right? So you it even if somebody gives you a thousand crore, it takes five years, three years in a good city, three years of debate to even start doing something, cycle track or a water body or whatever. Because somebody had done homework and all that, we were able to start and have a six months debate of what is a water body. Uh, it can't be done. Indian uh, Chennai people are horrible. All water body is gone, etc. We ended up restoring, not we, the smart city the corporation, etc., etc., money from different places. We ended up restoring 210 water bodies wow. and 60 temple tanks because we put a process in place. Now, mm -hmm. some purist may say, look, that's not the way to do. You have to, you know, do each water body. Yes, we did. We had some framework, but you can't ask an executive engineer or a First an engineer on the ground to now become a water body expert just because he got transferred into a, a stormwater drain department yesterday. And now we are expecting him to come up with a you know, world-class framework or something. So that homework takes five years in a stable environment because Smart City, for example, had money and stable people, stable consultants and so on and so forth. And many bureaucrats supporting us, many politicians supporting us. We were stable enough to have debate and take things forward. How many cities have that luxury? So if, mm. if that stability is not, it's just churning all day long. Today you say water body, tomorrow the pressure is to do something else. So it goes zigzag, zigzag, two years, no, election has come. Then the whole thing, secretaries and all got changed. You start all over again, the discussion. The engineers have got transferred to uh, you know, solid waste management. Uh, the, the new guy has no idea what you're talking about and so on and so forth, right? So you can't, we can't, we can, we won't be able to do pretty much anything at this rate, you know? Uh, people like you have been talking about cycle track. I don't know what a cycle track is. I only seen videos of a cycle track, but that damn cycle track is like a brain surgery. It's got so many parameters and so many. So when we intellectuals talk to government people or engineers, I blame us because now you're dumping some big idea on his head and saying, no, no, you shouldn't have done cycle track like this. You should have done this count. You should have uh, put a cycle track from here to there, not there to here. How did he know all this stuff? He has no idea. You asked him to put a cycle track, he put a cycle track, you know? So I'm saying each component of a city, right? Whether it's a pedestrian plaza, well, see, and, and then the second point, quick point is, once the city does something and gets over the public's uh, annoyance, sometimes public is very opposed to good at projects, for example, because they don't know what the hell is going on. People are digging up in front of their house or something. But sometime when the good project happens, the momentum and uh, support built for yeah. similar projects in other places is tremendous. And that's my experience. We've converted yeah. whatever little work we've done in Smart City into many folds because money falls from the sky when you have a detailed project report. Uh, some a team of people who people, the system is uh, trustworthy enough to say, these people can get it done, right? Then you have stability to take it forward. You can do one plaza, you can do 10 plaza. You fix one water body, you can do 100 water body, right? Uh, one cycle track and then it's well used and with uh, then you'll say look uh, you should have camera you should not have the should have vendor policy because vendor shouldn't sit on a cycle track you should have a footpath because people shouldn't be walking out you should have parking policy and uh, towing ch charges and towing for this and that punishment because he shouldn't sit on a cycle track. each simple cycle track itself becomes 10 different massively impossible projects so why not cookie cutter into saying that let us at least catch up to some extent so every city can do 10 buses one parking management 
one kilometer cycle track with standards and everything uh, and so on and so forth so that city says oh, okay uh, we can do that one kilometer we can do 10 kilometer and this is what has happened in pune i think surat to some extent in chennai i'm sure bangalore bangalore has done some amazing work uh, with respect to tender shore and so on everybody i'm sure would have complained saying what kind of a you know, foolish idea is this you know put big footpath and waste money blah 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 now everybody i'm sure wants us at least you know looks people love it people are walking traffic is flowing better so that first piece is difficult why not why torture the city for 10 years even though they have money they're not able to do why not cookie cutter it and help uh, speed up things you know? no i agree with you i think the cycle stand thing cycle uh, lane example was good because when we put the pigmentation here they didn't know how to pigment it they just put enamel paint it was slippery and when you say you had to do oxide oxide mix with this thing he said sir we don't have a mixing plant <laughs> so where do you get this oxide from? You're asking for a green color, which will never come. So there are lots of learning curves and the tender share was a good example. Once you set the momentum and yeah. have the patience to institutionalize that, the bureaucratic yeah. sites of things will continue to go on. But here's the thing also, the tender share is not going anywhere. The 50 kilometers that was promised is where it is standing. And continued allocation to projects is not there. You know, it gets siphoned off or something. And this is where I think there were there were calls on my show when I was speaking with Shikant from Janagra. He was also saying untied grants are important because there's a lot of money that is going into operational expenses. We, we'd much rather have untied grants than tied grants. But on the other hand, listening to you, we can make out that tying it to a project, make sure that you are giving an output at least, saying that I want to, for this money, I want to see this. So where do you stand on tied versus untied? Should we just give the corporation the money and say, do what you want with it? No, no, no. no. So there, there is a tied and untied. Both are important because... It cannot, again, you cannot have one Satya, one Raj sitting and saying, I'll tell you everything and you do according to it. No, no. We should only focus on strategic projects, not day-to-day -day problems, not, uh, you know, uh, every problem under the sun. You, know, you, you can't win that battle, right? That's one point. Second point is, tied or untied, the one big, huge mistake we make and public gets very annoyed is, we never look at the long-term maintenance, right? You mm. can't give a, a fancy Mercedes-Benz to some poor person who's hungry and uh, expect him to maintain it and then complain that he's not maintaining. You build something, you better think in terms of the o and cost, who's going to manage it, etc. So that is very, very important. And again, see, when I say uh, most of my examples are road and footpath, what I'm not saying, and it should be said is, same knowledge applies to finance and, and mm. city finance. Right? It's not a, someone throws some money at the city and um, some magic happens. How do you raise funds? How do you allocate funds? How, all this is a huge field in itself. Then what is the o and cost? What is the o and How are we going to make o and practical? How do you make sure it's happening? And so on and so forth. So same thing in a modern world, you can't have a city without digital layers to it, right? Most of the work goes in monkey work, you know, mm. reputation, day and day. A lot of this can be done electronically. You know, life of a bureaucrat or an engineer or of a citizen can be, 80% better, simpler, you know, watch Netflix or go to YouTube and enjoy a video rather than doing 80% of the monkey work we do every day, right? And and it's easy to say IT. IT is a massively complex problem from IoT device to cloud to et cetera, et cetera. We, we have a command and control center which works well here. But I don't want to joke. That I, I probably went bald. If I were in bald, I would have gone bald doing that project. It was so complicated technically. And... Uh, how do you see the edge analytics camera? Six years ago, people would laugh if you say edge analytics camera. If, now, of course, everybody has it. How do you bring an edge analytics camera into the whole process by automating? Is the car parked in the wrong place? Is the vendor sitting in the, on the footpath, etc.? Can can be done, right? Or is the subway flooding? Today, do you, you don't need a man or woman to go check and see if the subway is flooding. There are mechanisms, IoT devices. But these were like cutting edge stuff uh, six years ago, and nobody has any, including me, had no idea what an IoT device is. So suddenly going from zero to that is not an easy task. Again, throwing money and saying do a command and control means I only know Excel spreadsheet, right? How can you expect me to do NASA or ISRO level work? See, today, for example, you can talk to ISRO, get satellite images, keep track of water bodies, keep track of your forests, keep track of uh, land use or whatever else, right? Uh, and in, the, uh, in terms of climate change, you can start looking at heat islands. You can start uh, creating uh, mm -hmm. solutions so that the heat islands are coming down. These are infinite problems, which technologies can solve to a large extent by, you know, do the 80-20 leapfrogging and so on. 
but where is the capacity of the city so here also mm. sort of simply sending a whatsapp video to a government official saying paranga look what london did or what uh, stockholm did so what you know we don't need the video from you i don't you don't need my video youtube guys video no if you're really interested go find it. point is what how do you make it happen nobody tells them right nobody tells the city how to make that particular thing of stockholm happen here what uh, rfp is required what uh, stent what concrete is required etc etc I, I'm, I'm at the risk of over sounding very tech, I mean, technocratic and infrastructure. I'm not talking. I'm talking about soft stuff. People mm. complain about this. When, how do you respond to public? This is all electronic now. You know, nobody writes letters to government. No, any, I mean, very rarely. How do you do sentiment analysis and uh, figure out even before somebody complains and go solve his problem, right? Uh, and so on and so forth. You can improve governance, speed up governance, but again, it comes down to. There's a standard for the tree. It's a native tree. Tree needs six feet or whatever meter of uh, digging of a hole. It needs watering. So these are all standardized in Singapore. You can't uh, walk in and tell Singapore, "Hey, I have a brainwave now. I have, let's change all the tree to something." Because I feel so. I saw palm tree in Doha. So let's do palm tree in Solomon. Why? Because Singapore, la. We can do it here. I'll say, "Hey, great idea. Let's try. Let's try it." So my point is, the capacity won't come from the air just because somebody had money. so capacity can be built by cookie cutting it and every city doesn't have expertise it takes a lot of expertise in all these areas to get anything done so can't we think of a way at a state level or at a union level whatever it may be assemble pieces of expertise to say look this requires these end things to be done bus buying means these end things to be done you want this money please do this right then you build your capacity you decide you want more buses please go ahead and buy buses to the credit of smart city mission they are trying to do in certain areas so for example uh, with respect to uh, streets for all uh, cycling for change and so on and so forth uh, initially they did uh, say okay challenge do it etc etc now i think they are learning from their past and saying you know what look at uh, the so and so city they've done this particular kind of thing they are sending expertise ngos and all to that city and saying look before you start planning let us give some gyan so that you catch up with a london or a paris at least in terms of cycle track or something so in every topic we could do that right so do we have to put pipes from here to there uh, like they did 300 years ago maybe not maybe not today even in india for that matter the, the whole idea of fecal matter uh, water treatment it's all getting decentralized right in a dramatic way I mean, it's, it's amazing how much. Try. But who is going to sit and do technocratic research of it to say who's a fraud versus who's real versus will it fit into our system versus uh, what is the OEM? It's not something you know, average uh, engineer can do. No. So city needs that specialized capacity to sit and analyze these things and say, look, this will work. Let's try this out. You know, whether it's decentralized this or whether it's parking management system or and so on. So in India. in some cities people like you uh, people like iddp people like janagraha and n number of wri they have done a herculean task i mean i hats off to all of you uh, having tried this right now how many satyas are there in uh, india you know uh, there are hundreds of cities can uh, uh, can you reproduce satyas and cycle ma- uh, you know mayors in every city no you can't right so how do you uh, scale mcdonalds somebody sitting in somewhere and scaling mcdonalds right that one group is suggesting in email and they use this kind of fork no more uh, this kind of why because they have done some research saying that human beings like this kind of fork and not that kind of fork or something use this kind of patty uh, in the burger but somehow magically happening so that think tank technocratic skill is missing in india money is not going to solve that problem so we need to kind of start cookie cuttering our projects take the most important things a fundamental a city needs and start telling the city look metro rail okay i'll, I'll finish this one mm. can you run a bullock cart on a track and call it metro rail and get money from a state and central government no. no even the worst metro rail in india is better than anything you would have done 20 years ago okay i've, I've been to quite a few metro rail you may uh, complain about the planning side of it metro rail by itself may be good but then you need to step out there is no intermodal integration because Uh, that's n number of departments there's no uh, densification there's not transit oriented development uh, that's a different problem but my point is multi million dollar multi billion dollar metro rail even the worst metro rail in india is a cookie cutter model right it is a, a replication of a delhi model plus if you can improve upon it go ahead and do it. that's that's my understanding you can't go below that you have to do at least what delhi did and then you improve upon it 
Now tomorrow, if Tamil Nadu uh, were to decide and do Metro Rail some other city in, in Tamil Nadu, I'm sure Chennai Metro Rail will have a huge role to replicate this over there. And they will say, okay, you know what? We learned from the mistakes. Uh, let's not repeat that there and they'll improve upon it, right? This is how Toyota makes a car. This is how, uh, you know, uh, so-and-so company makes that product. It's not like they come up with a perfect product on first go. They'll try uh, as much research and come up with something good. Then let the cities decide, no, well, how much cycle track is required, how much uh, whatever is required. Because then another thing will happen. Possibility of success is higher. So there's a cycle track, parking management, tree planting, lake crystal, whatever. So public will not say, look, some idiot has uh, spent all this money and it's uh, gone down the drain, right? And that's uh, that backfires even more than uh, good intention. So if we can do our best, make sure city is succeeding, then public itself will start asking, look, I, I, I love the cycle track or love this footpath or love that uh, pedestrian plaza or my water body in front of my house need to be fixed right away. What can we do? And the city will be able to respond and say, you know what, uh, we know how to do it. Let's do it kind of thing. Politicians, by the way, this is, we, we are always cynical about politicians. My experience in Chennai is that they, if you show them good project, implemented project, not summa theory, if you show them implemented project, at least in Chennai, every politician wants a good project in his or her constituency. You know, they, yeah. they really come and chase you to say, okay, can we have this in the, yeah, my constituency? So I'm an optimistic guy. Unless we change dramatically, we'll be foolishly optimistic. You know, we, we, we need to take that dual approach of decentralize radically down the road. And hopefully all the patriotic politicians will say, you know what, I'm not going to be here 100 years from now, but I want the country and my city, state and all to be a great place. So let's decentralize. But in the meanwhile, bureaucrats and technocrats need to now start saying, okay, we don't have 100 years. Let's let's get things done in two year time frame, three year time frame election cycle time frames and so on so so i think it's very useful to pick up on that election cycle cycle time frame and the capacity issue there are a couple of things i wanted to kind of uh, ask you about one is the politicians are definitely living project to project right they are not thinking systems they are not thinking of uh, fundamentally altering certain things that gives them the capacity gives at least the bureaucrats the capacity to do things you talked about technology adopting technology i find it is very difficult to do technology inside the government because it's a it's a lot harder they're trying their best i'm not saying they are not but it is expensive the and the skills are not acquirable at the cost that they are center center has somehow tried to wing it by doing a lot of jugad around the rules my question is is with all these transfers happening raj uh, there is no there is no People who have institutional memory of how it is being done and everything needs to go into a process. Technocrats like you have gone in from the outside. You provided some expertise. You've been inside the government and some of us have all contributed in ideas and everything without, uh, you know, being able to contribute. What is this model which will work? Because some government authorities are very wary of working with people outside. They might have trust issues and other things because there's too much of skeletons in the closet they don't want to get out. But at the same time, the internal capacity cannot be beefed up. This transfer system is playing havoc. Is there a sweet spot in which all of this can come together? You should still be able to leverage expertise from outside at some level because others can manage this better and yet have some accountability issues things that comes along with the job that you have as a bureaucrat or as a politician, right? You're accountable to many views. So, how do, how um, should they balance this? So I do have sympathy for the uh, bureaucrats who think like that. It's not, for, um, they may be sinister, some sinister reason, but most of the time it's not sinister. It's See, any, any profession, right? Uh, whether you want to be an accountant or a mechanic or a plumber, it takes some experience and certain personality to be good at that particular job. Imagine you're an expert on something and you go inside the uh, system and then start saying, why isn't this department working like the private sector I came from? I've heard industry captains of industry say this, oh, government should function like a private company. That's utter nonsense, right? Government has a completely different purpose of, for its existence. Private company, etc., has a completely different purpose. NGOs have a completely different purpose. 90% of the people who work in private sector cannot work inside government. It's, it's a very different skill set, right? Some of us were a little bit better off because we, for let's say 10 years or five years, we worked with government. So it's not like many of us, whether I, I know many NGO people, etc., right? It's not like one fine day. We quit our private sector job and just walked in and said, you know what, I'm a great cloud expert or an IoT device <laughs> expert. I'm going to help. Uh, no, no. We, we spent a lot of time getting frustrated outside. We saw what the system works. Then we figured out how do you work this in that particular system. We didn't say, 
I want all the system to change. Only then I will do something. So my point is, many people are not suitable to be going from outside to inside. That's number one. But coming back to your original question is, yes, business as usual cannot go on, right? So there are always talk about people coming lateral entry. I don't know how much of that is successful or not. Like for the reason I just told you, if you are going into a garment as a crusader to clean up the whole country and all that, then you might as well run an NGO. I mean, you shouldn't be, do, that's not your purpose inside garment, right? Or you should go join a, what, I mean, I don't know, appropriate agency inside the government and try to do all that. So my point is, I can't walk into a hospital and say, I'm going to do brain surgery differently because I come from a, a such and such background. So one thing I've seen happen in Tamil Nadu for sure is that good or bad, right? Again, when you get people from the outside, you, you could get consultants who have specialized skills, which I really like because you and I don't have uh, experience of working in uh, Assam, Gujarat, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, yeah. getting beaten up by various governments, getting learning the bad and good examples of various places. And then you come here with the experience, you're giving me gold, actually. I mean, you're giving me a lot. But even a good consultant needs to be managed. To manage that good consultant, you know, you need to have some idea what you're managing, right? You need to have some goals, some vision. Only then he or she can deliver. You can't simply ask that person to run the show because then they'll go off on a tangent. Then, for example, uh, in, at least in Chennai Corporation example, we've had a lot of uh, volunteer experts coming in with what you call it prepping, saying that, look, this is not your private sector. This is a very different structure and so on and so forth. But they need to be managed daily because they get depressed, right? We have had a lot of interns. That's one thing Smart City did uh, very nicely. They had an yeah. internship program and we really made use of it. Some of those interns did such amazing work. Ultimately, these external people need to start building the capacity of the engineers and so on. Because originally the chief engineer of the city, the Aston engineer city, they were the technocrats, right? Mm -hmm. But unfortunately for, there are, there are, by the way, there are some amazing engineers in Chennai. I know that. Okay? They're fantastic sure. people. They work like crazy for the city. Okay, So I have nothing but sympathy and admiration for them. But that's unfair to expect anything from them to do miracles in this kind of a system. So I think we need to start thinking of how do we bring expertise from the outside by through doing projects, doing uh, services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You're building the capacity of the actual organization. You can't replace a Chennai corporation with an NGO or a you know consultant. So I think some of these mechanism by which like a smart city was a good way to bring in a lot of these expertise. So for example, a lot of very specialized consultants who required a lot of handholding and a lot of back and forth. And they get frustrated because they don't get data. They can't get access to such and such department. We had that ability. So we worked together to bring in that uh, consultant or expert, et cetera, et cetera. Process the problem, uh, whether it's a water body restoration, IT uh, something, or whatever, creating a beautiful RFP, or whatever it may be. And then helping the corporation implement it. Because corporation is the one implementing it, or the government agency, right? Uh, it's not like you and I are going and digging up the road and implementing something. Ultimately, they are authorized to go dig up the road and do whatever necessary. But what to do, how to do, when to do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that technical aspect came from this particular team. As an example, I'm saying that smart city, and uh, the expertise came from outside. Smart city by itself had only very few people, good consultants and so on. But many experts came and worked together. So I would argue that smart city, call it smart city, call it any other uh, project. The intent of smart city is not to go do a bunch of projects or paint a few walls and saying smart city I'd say or you know, build up even a fancy project. I mean, there are some, some cities that have done pretty amazing work. That's not the objective. The objective is to create something, I would have called it a planning center of mm -hmm. corporation, right? We were acting to some extent as somebody has to stably sit day in and day out without worrying about typhoons and hurricanes. And uh, uh, because, you know, the, the, the corporation officials, are, oh my God, they work 10 times, 100 times than you and me, right? Day yeah. and night. Today's a storm, tomorrow is something else, dengue, malaria. You and I can't handle all that, right? But yeah. our job was in that, right? Our job was to sit there and, you know, do help with the intellectual part and translating ideas into action. There, at least in some cases, we were able to do it. And I'm hoping that that kind of model can continue, right? You know, uh, so even when a new commissioner comes, quickly they realize, okay, this team is able to plan and give good ideas. And there's some uh, long-term knowledge over there. Then uh, deputy commissioners, etc. In their busy schedule, they start realizing that okay, you know what? Uh, let's work with uh, help these guys so that they can get the, these certain problems, long term, medium term problems solved, uh, and so on and so forth. So I think what is missing in our cities, at least, is a so-called planning center which is able to do non-execution uh, jobs. Right? Uh, the planning is completely missing in our city. 
I'm not talking about master planning. There may be always somebody doing master yeah. planning. Master planning doesn't say whether the tree should be on this side of the road or that side of the road. It's mm-hmm. a micro. Mm-hmm. Somebody has to create that. For that, you need a consultant. You need to do a GIS survey or whatever survey, a pedestrian survey, a 1D survey, a vehicle. So who's going to do all that, right? So that kind of a planning center has to be there. And I, this time, Smart City has given a pretty interesting, at least six years is that the SPV has survived. What I would suggest to all government, all city government is to convert it into a proper planning center and not worry about how much money came into Smart City, but to equip it with uh, people uh, who can then start saying, okay, how do we create a pedestrian plaza? How do we create cycle tracks? How do we do this? And let the execution department do the execution. The last question I had was on uh, this particular aspect, right? Uh, To get over this inertia that these cities have. It comes from two, three different uh, aspects that you mentioned when you do the cookie cutter approach from the national level a lot of policies exist nutp always existed you know there were lots of guidelines that are being issued the, the fame scheme and the pme bus saver scheme has somehow trusted around fifty thousand buses the cookie cutter approach has certain specifications that are there there is inertia because even with the smart cities right you've been a planning week and you're trying to give something to the local corporation the acceptance of that is not there because of lots of egos i am better i've been doing this for donkeys years who are you to tell me what to do or yeah 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 i think you did something but after your job is over you leave it to me i know how to do this the same way so there are entrenched attitudes and you know there are lots of those kind of things inside of the government bureaucracy because of their system uh, which does not allow you to do too much of changes, right? Now, how do you, if you were to just as concluding thoughts put forward uh, on the bureaucratic side alone, let's not touch the political side, bring capacity, increase capacity. One is to try and increase capacity of some people who are already there entrenched for a long time and say, or even tell them, get them to open up to newer capacities, get them open up to new things. One of the things you said was interesting, right? If they see a good project and a pilot, they might like it. They know that their political bosses will like it. Let's just keep it, keep doing more of these things. That's one way of looking at it. Is that just prove by project. But you're jumping project to project and systemic interventions do not come. They are not interested in a lot of theory. That thing is flooded. Just get me the deflooding. Whatever it means you, whatever it takes, just get it done. Right? It's very action oriented in terms of things. So is that a good way to proceed is just keep doing project to project to project and hope that it will stick and make a systemic change or you go back and say some of the fundamental rules are not even good enough for us to go on like the city doesn't have its own way of deciding on certain things you have too much of ego you shouldn't be allowed to do this if there are too many people getting transferred why aren't you keeping this institutional memory and continuing on some of these fundamental things don't change because you're just jumping project to project how do you deal with this dichotomy if you were to go look forward in changing so these I, things so I, I always joke with my ngo friends that uh, uh, system only understands tell me what to do hmm. how much concrete how much steel etc and and there's a reason for it right uh, so we, we can't, just because you and i like to uh, attend a seminar or have a chat over some fancy idea doesn't mean the system has to like it. Systems under pressure to deliver. I mean, millions of people are constantly telling them they are not doing a good job, right? Uh, mosquito problem, portal problem. In the pro- who has time and energy to sit and do chit chatting about uh, you know great frameworks and sustainable development goals and what uh, United Nations told and all that. So I always tell people, be practical. You be uh, intellectual and technocrat. But first, government wants to know, are you going to be there to help us implement it? Because see, a lot of good bureaucrats, what they worry is that you will throw some idea at them. Mm. They will go to the press and saying, look, this is coming. Or some politician may say, oh my God, this is coming in Chennai, right? You will run away because you are, <laughs> I am a fly-by-night operator, I ran away. Then they are stuck with this uh, <laughs> announcement yeah. saying that, so uh, it's like our WhatsApp videos, right? Mm. Uh, hey, look what uh, London has done. So. I, am I going to be there to help you implement it? No. So that's the first thing. Be practical about public who doesn't want theory. Uh, politicians and bureaucrats don't want theory. They want, what do you want me to do? right? And and what do you want me to do with all the problems? Way to solve the problem. What do public say? How do you measure this? Whatever. Mm-hmm. whatever maybe. That's one number one. The other thing I always felt is that I know uh, how to put it in words. When you have a detailed project report, I, mm-hmm. I tell this to the bureaucrat, money falls from the sky. Right? Mm-hmm. So the detailed project report is a code word for 10 years of thinking. Mm-hmm. A good detailed project. Any monkey can produce a detailed project report. But that detailed project report 
I cannot, uh, you see, if I take a digital project to you and you say, oh, Allah, you know, there's no space there. Digital project report says, you know what, there's a two meter from the tree which can be done like this. There is a tree that needs to be removed by and then transplanted over. You can't argue. You can say, don't do it. Yes, do it. But you can't say, Allah, you know, mm-hmm. sitting in this chair, I cannot say, Allah, 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 Allah. I would say color picture. I used, to, I used to get laughed at for saying this. Public policy is all about color picture. Color picture to me means somebody has done homework. If I don't know how to do homework, I used to call my architect friends and say, hey, this road is there. If I go tell, let's do footpath, people say, Allah, 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 Allah. Public won't walk on it. There's no space, sir. Uh, so much cars on the road. What uh, footpath are you talking about now? So architectural measure. We literally used to walk, run across the road as an when we were an NGO city connect. We ran across the road because we didn't have a measuring tape. So we said, okay, each step is X feet or something. From that, the architect would uh, plan and say, okay, you know, footpath go to parking here. Okay. There's a petrol bump. The entrance will be like this. When you show that picture, you can't argue with me. You don't want to do footpath. That's a different problem. You can't argue that there's no space for footpath or there's no space for this. So color picture, DPR, and I'm just over-exaggerating. The point is, you do your homework not based on London and Paris. You do your homework based on Thiruvan Muir or uh, JP Nagar or whatever. Okay. That also, that is a huge step forward because then people say, you know what, at least this guy's done some homework. It's doable. And then you have to have comparable color picture. We always had that, right? Look at Times Square. Look at what Tinaga could have been. Ah, panna mudiyada. Yes, sir, panna because look at the size of the footpath here. Look at the size. You can give a cycle track here. The trees can be here. People are drinking chai here, etc. Now you don't want it, fine, no problem. But look, okay. You want to be in New York? You have to do this kind of thing. So I'm, I'm just giving an example. It could yeah. be anything. Like water body, bad water body in Bangalore, then got amazingly restored. Nama water body, ida mari panna. You want it or not, right? Then money falls from the sky. That's my experience. Money is never a problem in our system. It is lack of what to do. Then very difficult thing to do, which takes resilience like a marathon race, is that a group of people have to work towards making the system talk your language. Mm. It is not Satya cycle track or, uh, you know, Raj's uh, tree or whatever, right? I am eternally grateful to many, many bureaucrats, many, many engineers and so on, because once they get convinced Mm. that particular thing, they may have short period of time, election came, got transferred, but they go somewhere else and they help you from there. Mm. I've seen that. The new person and saying, you know what, uh, these guys, they are dependable, right? So the homework you have to do with a new official, you know, who are you, what are you, et cetera, et cetera, all that gets reduced, right? And then you go say the same Ramayana all over again. I mean, I'm not suggesting the new person will, the new person may have different agenda, new problem, the politician must have given a new task or something. But the point is after one or two years, the system, if you're persistent, the system starts talking your language because you have convinced key people who are influential enough to say, you know what, let's do this. At least let's do this kind of thing. Sometimes you may have to do a pilot, one water body, which Bangalore has done. I mean, Bangalore has done amazing work in that sense. You have to do something on the ground to show that you're not some bullshit yeah. or other years, right? You have to show that this is doable, which means you have to deal with other NGOs, other experts, which is a difficult task, right? You don't know how to fix a water body. You have to bring three people. Those three people have three different ideas of what to do with the water body, right? So you as a citizen has to build a consensus and get some money and say, okay, let's show this to the government, how it can be done on paper and then on the ground. So there's no easy way to do it other than unfortunately to say resilience in the system and a group of people uh, need to start working together, which is my very important last point. One tragedy I see in Indian cities is that too many people doing parallel stuff, right? Mm. We, the intellectuals, we, the technocrats, we, the NGOs, we, the civil society people, we have very little ability to work together. You know? yeah. Same yeah. organizations. I, in fact, even when I was inside government, you know, I used to keep telling, I don't know what your funders want. That is your personal problem. But on the ground, can't we? They, 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 one Satya, that's it. There's only one Satya, right? They, I, we need thousands of yeah. and so on and so forth. Yeah? We can't reproduce. So why can't this group of people work on a common topic? You do this part, do this part, so that the multiplier effect happens. That, unfortunately, my experience is so that it just doesn't seem to happen. Everybody's reinventing the wheel. Everybody's starting from scratch. And they are completely underestimating what it takes to take an idea to fruition or implementation, it is not your great idea that matters. That YouTube has. I, I don't need you. We all have YouTube and we all can access it. 
that idea is of no use. Eh? That anybody yes. can get an idea. It's the effort of mental effort, physical effort, financial effort of this group of people over many, many, many years that makes one thing happen. That includes people in the government. That includes people outside the government. That could be a resident welfare association who are supporting you. It could be politicians who are retired who are supporting you or in power supporting you, opposition supporting, whatever it may be, right? Unless you have a consensus of few key decision makers inside and outside government, how can you expect anything to be done? I think so. You and I can't simply walk into a government and say, because I said you do. That's not how these countries work. Even no country works like that. So I think it is time we start pooling our resources to say, you know what, Satya, let's work together. You are an expert on something. I'm expert on something. This person has a third expertise. Can we now pull in together and come up with all the technocratic things I just told you, right? So it doesn't have to be the city finding a new Satya and reinventing the wheel and Satya going around in circles or a Raj going around in circles for 10 years. Why? How many years are we going to do this, right? So we have to, we, we, as much as there is chaos in the government, I'm saddened more by the chaos outside the government, you know? Uh, because no, I we think... are to work together. No, I think it is. It, it can get difficult there as well, right? I mean, if you're vested in it and you need somebody neutral who can convene all these things in some way and say, we'll pick the best of the lot because it's hard to prevent people from doing certain things again and again. But as long as they realize the worst thing is also beyond the coordination part, uh, at least because the bureaucrats own accountability, they'll make sure that they choose between all of the good ideas that are there. The worst part is leaving reports on the table. Of people, you know, here's a report telling you how nicely you can do it and then walk away. Sitting down and getting it all the way to execute, even if you cannot do it, you should bring people who can do it and say, I'm yeah. going to do it with him or her, and they are going to take it forward and do it. I've, I've heard many bureaucrats tell me, I have lots of like we keep going to BMTC and say, You have to rationalize your roads. He says, There are five reports to rationalize the roads, <laughs> sit down and do it. <laughs> Here are the five reports that have been left by five different people. Sit down and do it with me. Then you will know who is the person. You pull one bus out of that route and see how many people get back at you. Exactly. Right? The next day, the MLA will call and say, who has to take that route away? Sir, it's not <laughs> making money. I don't care. It's my constituency. The hard part of the doing is where we don't want to get our feet wet because our funders told us just to leave a report on the table. And when you start getting involved in that, this is where all the complications of things come in. Do you Are you trustworthy? But in a positive way, like that's where the reward also comes. You know, once yeah. you are able to do it, the, the your uh, sort of the self-satisfaction and the value to the system goes up dramatically. I think so. Because, because then people start trusting you when you go. And it's not like you and I going and giving ideas on everything, right? So mm. We're trying to say, look, what about this person expert? Garbage, this person is expert. Let's work together. Let's go to the government together. And, and there's another angle to this. So, for example, you may be very good at dealing with uh, bureaucrats or uh, chief engineer. I may not be, right? Mm. My personality may not be suited for it. Maybe I'm good at something else. So, uh, that angle is there. You know, some Not everybody is able to deal with uh, the certain rules and regulations inside the system. They start fighting with the guy on the other side. Instead of using saying that you are all corrupt and lazy or something. So maybe my personality is not good suited to do that work. So cooperation is not simply about you, your bus problem and my bus ideas mm. coming together. It's also personality. Maybe you have money and I don't know. Maybe I have money and you have the expertise. Why don't I give you the money and say, let's go together, right? Yeah. So so the multiple is, I mean, we have very little resource mm. in our side, on this side. So if you're going to spread it so thin that you have no impact on anything, we have to be blaming ourselves. So I, I'm hoping that we could package that also together. You know, every city, every so. share a group of people who says, look, you know what? I don't personally like you, but let's work together for a greater cause or whatever. Or maybe you're great friends. And, and then we have to start coming up with the mechanisms to say, how do we share credit? Right? Mm. This is where things fall apart. You did the work. I took the credit. So next time you're not going to come to me and so on and so forth. Right. We have to have that maturity to say, you know what, unfortunately, the press guy quoted you and not me, or they quoted me because I'm the one talking to the press. <laughs> so the image is that I did all the work and Satya didn't do anything. So on the money, problem is where all fizzles out. I think we need to seriously gel them. In fact, before we think of decentralization and 100 years, we need to ask ourselves, how do we come together and pull in resource, put our egos aside and say, to, for making the city or the state or whatever better, how do we work together and have yeah. processes in place? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think you need to figure out complementarities in collaborations that can help. And the second thing is of the credit is if credit what credit is what gets you the money on the table, then oh. you will fight for it. 
Mm-hmm. If it was uh, just work that gave you the money, that's why the difference between the non-profit and the for-profit world is able to balance this. In, in, in a company, you just have the work done and you get paid for it. You'll get it done anyway. It doesn't matter. Whereas in the non-profit world, credit is what is one of the, uh, not just the only thing, is one of the key it's, things that gets you the money. Currency. You know, you realize this right. credit is currency. And uh, for a larger cause, if you can spin that currency to uh, get people work together, nothing like it. You know? yeah. It works like magic. I think so. Mm-hmm. On those beautiful words, thanks for spending this time and helping us unpack uh, the bureaucratic and the technocratic world of governance and uh, try and see how we can go forward in the path of uh, improving certain things. Uh, thanks a bunch. And here's a call out to the rest of the people to like, subscribe and share and listen to these videos and uh, forward it to your friends so you can have more. So I can get more nice guests like Raj on the show who can impart more knowledge to you guys about what's going on around you and how you can fix your cities. Thanks a bunch, Raj. And uh, thank you so much. See you all next week. Bye-bye.